One of the major questions I get asked always is, can I shoot a whole documentary or a whole film on one lens? And my answer always is the same. It is, yes, you can. And after our recent documentary went live on this channel, oh boy, I have been inundated with questions on my DMs asking me which lens I use to shoot the documentary. And today I am here to do just that, to tell you that all you need is one lens. And if you haven't watched that video, spoiler alert, just pause this video, make sure to watch that particular documentary before you watch this because we are about to go behind the scenes of that particular documentary so that I explain the process, taking you step by step as to how that video was actually produced all on the Sigma F 1.4 lens. That is exactly the lens we use throughout the whole shoot. Nothing more, nothing else. Meanwhile, someone stole my camera to do an intro for this video. Spoiler alert, it was a failure. Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome to the Africa Amaze channel. On this channel, we teach you photography, cinematography, videography, and all its other related courses. If you are new to this channel, kindly remember to subscribe. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Africa Amaze channel. On this channel, we teach you videography, cinematography, photography, and all its other related courses. If you are new to this channel, kindly remember to subscribe and click on that no notification. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Okay. If you are new to this channel, kindly remember to subscribe and click on that notification icon so that anytime we drop a video, you will be the first person. Anyway, you kind of get the point. Subscribe. All right, so the shoot is divided into two days. The first day we actually got on set, that was where I shot the interview parts. Then after that, we now move on to the second day. So let me take you right to the first day when we shot all the interview parts. I've kind of decided that this is the angle that I'm going to be shooting from. So we have the sun coming in, uh, facing this side of his face. So you realize that one side is a little bit uh, brighter than another side is a little bit darker. So that dynamics of light and shadow is really very good on him. And that is why I'm deciding to go with this angle. And again, the background, because I want to shoot really shallow. So I'm getting the background to be a little bit much more blur. But however, I don't want this to be static. So we are going to bring in the motorized slider now, set it up and we can have the camera move a little bit so that we have the slight left and right movement. And also we're we'll using the Zoom H1N recorder to pick up the audio. We are not going to be using a lapel over here. I'm using a lapel, as you can see. It's a wireless lapel, which is wirelessly sending signals to this camera. But we are going to be recording his own using another mechanism altogether. That is not going to be a lapel. We are going to mount audio on top of his head so that we can record that separately. And I'm intentionally using this side because um, if I come a little bit low, I can see this uh, grass over there. The more you have foreground elements, the more you can accentuate the movement. I can move this camera from this side all the way to this side. But if I don't have any foreground elements, then it is not actually going to be clear. So you have different layers. So you have a foreground, he's a mid ground and you have the background. And so each of these layers will be moving at a different speed because remember objects that are closer to you kind of moves faster whilst objects that are farther away move slower. So that is kind of like, if you like the philosophical thinking of the reason why I'm choosing to go with this angle. So let's bring in the motorized slider. If you have watched my recent video on some of the equipment I regret buying, this is one of the equipment I haven't used for God knows in a very long time. So today is going to serve as a very good opportunity to use the slider for the very first time on a shoot like this. So let's get the slider and we set it up. A very good tip for you guys. If you're going to a location and you have um, someone to help, it's really very good. Um, sometimes if you have a dedicated person to carry your equipment around, that is really very good or can really help you in uh, most situations. So it's something that I try to take really seriously, especially if I have someone around to help. It is not compulsory. There are certain times it's just you alone and um, hey, the work still has to go on. You have to get things done. So in those cases, I kind of understand you. Just go ahead and uh, do it what you have. If you're alone, shoot alone. Instead of using one stand, I intend to use two stands just to make it balanced so that I have one at the other side and one um, at the other end. So let's throw a timer on the clock and see 
how long it takes to set this up because if you have watched my other tutorial you realize that i did complain that bringing such a thing to set one of the major reasons why sometimes you feel lazy in kind of bringing it is the time it takes to set up so let's see how long it takes ready to roll okay so in three two one action Don't do this guys, always find a safe place to land. So at this point we were done, we landed the drone and the whole place was dark so we had to get back home, prepare for the next day shoot. So this is the next day. Basically for today, um, we are going to be shooting the B-rolls over here. Unfortunately, we got here slightly a little bit late, but it's exactly the time because as you can see the position of the sun currently, is still the magic R, so that is really very good. And yeah, from yesterday, we didn't detach the moto from this again. So at least now it's already ready to go. Um, we are not going to struggle in fixing that. And so all I need to do is just to connect all the power sources. I've already gone ahead to make some notes of um, every single thing that we need. So this is really going to be straightforward. And today this is not going to be mounted on a tripod. All the shots are really going to be um, from ground up. And so I'm going to be using this little extensions here. So we are still using um, the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4. That is what we are using all the way through for this documentary. And as you can see, there's more that you can achieve with just one lens so far. It's really been very good and I'm sure by the end. So again, um, everything is going to be in uh, 60 FPS and uh, yeah. So we are going to be shooting um, wide shots in the beginning. And so the only disadvantage now here is that we have a 50 mm and we are actually shooting on a micro four thirds. That's a huge disadvantage in this area. I can't really get really extremely wide shots because this is already a hundred millimeter lens instead of a 50 millimeter means we are zooming into the lens twice. So a 50 mm lens like this on this camera at this point is 100 millimeters so we are quite zoomed in so because we want a wide shot we have to go all the way back far away in order to be able to get a wide shot 
So um, I'm kind of presuming that probably somewhere around um, this area, we might have uh, enough clearance. So I need to have a look first, just to be sure. And... At this moment, uh, I've gotten the shot exactly how I need it. And uh, I would have just gone ahead to straight away press record. But unfortunately, remember, we are doing this alone, no director. And so I'll now have to um, get the subject ready for all the other things. And so this is where having, let's say, a director for a project like this would have come in handy. So we just set our camera and straight away, the director would have sorted out all the other things Then we go ahead and shoot. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. So let's direct the character to get ready. And um, yeah, we go ahead and shoot. So you kind of get the point, at the end of the day, one lens can do the job, but as you saw there, just look at the distance I had to cover in order to be able to get this kind of a wide shot. You just need to ask yourself whether it's worth it and whether probably the location you are working with, you are going to have that ginormous amount of space to be able to move around. If, let's say, you are shooting in a very congested space, then of course that means that you need wide angle lenses. This particular technique will not work. You might not be able to use one lens to shoot a documentary or a full movie from beginning to end. But if you do have the space, then it's actually, actually really doable. Thank you so much for watching this video as always. And I'll leave the other parts again to the person who stole my camera to finish this up. Hello and welcome to Africa on this channel. On this channel, we teach you videography, cinematography, photography, and all its other related courses. If you are new to this channel, kindly remember to subscribe and click on that no notification. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> If you are new to this channel, kindly remember to subscribe and click on that notification icon so that anytime we drop a video, you will be the first person.